And now, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Four rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing solid white trunks, he weighed officially 123 and three quarter pounds. As a professional, this veteran brings 30 victories, 24 defeats, three draws, and 19 wins. Coming by way of knockout from Miami, Florida, here is John Molina. And next is opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing purple and silver, he weighed officially 122 and three quarter pounds. This young professional is perfect in his professional campaign. 15 bouts, 15 victories, and no defeats. With three wins coming by way of knockout, he is a three-time member of the U.S. Olympic boxing team and former amateur world champion from Cincinnati, Ohio, the undefeated Rashid Baby Pitt Warren. Come on, Chief Second, come on in. Acuérdense, dimos las instrucciones en el camerino, me obedecen y se protegen en todo momento. Remember, I give the instructions in the back, obey my command and protect yourself at all times. Do you have any questions? Looks good over here. ¿Alguna pregunta? Looks good over here. Touch them up, toquen los guantes. Touch them up. Let's go. We are scheduled for four. It is a lightweight fight. Warren's been fighting at bantamweight. He came in just above the super bantamweight level, so they made it a, a lightweight fight, which is fine at this level. We'll see how quick he comes out, Paulie. He usually does work very fast. You'll see he's a, he's a southpaw, and he comes out with a big, big right hook right there off the bat. Okay, looking for dynamite quickly. Absolutely. John Molina worked the body downstairs a little bit. He's got Warren up on the ropes a little bit. Rashid, one of the most accomplished amateur records ever. So he's not a lot of things that John Molina's going to bring and he hasn't seen before. But you know that Rashid told me early day that he just got caught with a right hand right there. I'm going to stop. Stop. Molina, they're back. They're back. They're back. the opponent, you know, there's only a four round. This is a veteran of a lot of fights. He might say, hey, you know what? In four rounds, I may be able to give it everything I got here. Absolutely. That's why I was thinking the pace was going to be real quick. He can't afford the full rider give any rounds away anyway. But left hand upstairs. Warren working the body real good, then went upstairs right there. So you can tell he's been working on his power shots a lot. And that seemed to be the missing link for him. As an amateur, as you know, they say you get you fall into some bad habits. And now he knows that he as he steps into the professional ranks, he's got to deliver those knockout shots. Absolutely, and getting, getting some good leverage on those shots. And, you know, Molina is a short, small target, so really uh, Warren's going to have to open him up a little bit. And, and knock 147, 145 left. They call that they call that a knockdown. It looked like a little bit of a slip to me, to tell you the truth, Paul. Yeah, I didn't realize it was a knockdown until halfway through the count. <laughs> I didn't either. I thought he just kind of tripped because he was uh, getting a lot of pressure from Rushy Warren right there. Lead left hand, banging to the body, behind the head right there. He's going to hear about that. Halfway through round one, a lot of punches been thrown already. <laughs> like he said, that, that's a, that famous jab Rashi has. Yeah, it's a South Pole jab too. <laughs> Good shots downstairs. That one into the ribs right there. Molina's feeling a hurt with a whole big minute left in round number one. That's a long minute, folks, when you're in against thunder and lightning. I like that Molina's still fighting, though. You know, he's definitely seen by this point that he's at a disadvantage in speed and uh, a lot of other things right now. But, but uh, you know, I, I like the poker face he's showing. And I like the fact that, you know, he's still in there trying, even if he's outgunned at the moment. Oh, downstairs into the breadbasket with the left. Molina smiling a little bit. That really tells me that he's hurt. He's getting hurt. Downstairs, right hook just misses from Rashi. Try to make quick work of this one. More so than frustration, more so than hurt, I think it's frustration too, you know, when you're just only taking thunder and you're not able to return fire or when you're trying to land back and you're missing. You know, Rashi made a nice move right before that, playing those body shots where he spun him around. So again, frustrating when you're outmatched. Final seconds, round number one here in Sunrise, Florida. 
And Molina, oh, uppercut right at the bell right there. As we're staying with you here, a lot of punches thrown in that first round. Rushy getting a lot of work in. I don't know how much longer I, I, I we both missed it. I thought it was sort of a trip and a slip, yeah. but that was a 10-8 round for him right there. Yeah. It was a knockdown. And 10-8 and a four-rounder, you know, it's tough, it's tough to come back from, from those knockdowns. And when you don't only have a few rounds to come back with, you know, one thing, credit to Molina, he never looked hurt in the in the round. Never, you know, you can see the frustration. You can see he's outmatched. He never looked hurt. Let's see how he comes back in the second round, because even if you don't get hurt, the frustration a lot of times makes you gun shy, especially with a guy as fast as Rushing Warren. Take a look at what happened in this knockdown. Yeah, that was a, that was a push down. It was a place down. Yeah. And a couple other replays here. The good uppercut by Rashi Warren. I like how he sets that up right at the bell too. You know, he come around the side, makes makes Molina bend bend down over, and then he throws the uppercut. Round number two scheduled for four. Our first fight here on Fox Sports One from Sunrise, Florida. Glad you're with us, Rashi Warren in the purple and silver, taking on John Molina in the white trunks. Molina had a, what we will call a crumple down, knockdown in that first round as Warren has been throwing a lot of volumes of punches upstairs, downstairs, and trying to work on his repertoire as best he can in this four rounder. Fighting as a lightweight tonight, came in just over 122 pounds. Oh, there's a nice body shot right to the stomach. He's been whipping those, Paulie. Yeah, yeah, he gets them in there. You know, like I said, Molina, a shorter, smaller target, so a lot of times it can be hard to get the body shots in there, but it's good to see that Rashi is still making space and creating those body shots. Lead right from John Molina right there. Didn't have any effect whatsoever, but he's really getting beaten down to the body. And that's one of the things we talk about with amateurs. They never seem to really learn how to body punch, Paulie. You know that better than anybody. And once you get into the professional ranks, that's the, that's yeah. the weapon you have to have. Yeah, it's a necessity a lot of times. You, you got to become more of a complete fighter. And there's more rounds to, for opponents to adapt to you. So if you can get an attack to the body and to the head, it'll leave more variation and more for your opponent to worry about. Well, being a left-hander, Warren has been compared, some people say prematurely, to the, the great Pernell Whitaker, who beat uh, Puerto Rico's legend Alfredo Rivero twice in his career. But I think it's mostly because of the left-handed style and the defensive style that he's had in his career so far. You know, I, being compared to Whitaker, who, who was a, a lightweight, is tall order. You know, I think in style, I'd actually compare him more to Hector Camacho. You know, he's got a, uses the jab very well. Whitaker jabbed, but he was more of a flick and calling jab. Camacho used to snap out that, that uh, southpaw jab a lot. Rashi uses that southpaw jab and then he throws those whipping fast combinations in bunches. Pernell a lot of times is more a la Floyd Mayweather where he put two and three together only. As you see uh, inside again, uh, Molina getting frustrated at missing even though Rashi is right in front of him. Yep. 45 seconds left of round number two. Molina's still with us here. Rashi lead left hand. Molina, to his credit, banging to the body a little bit. He has snuck in some right hands in this round. He's trying, man. He's trying. That's, that's the point. He's only five foot two. Give away a lot of reach. A lot of he give away a lot of talent advantage. But he's still there. <laughs> 20 seconds left. Round number two. <laughs> now Molina decides he's going to dance a little bit. Inside 10 seconds left, round number two. You're watching Golden Boy Boxing on Fox Sports 1. Round number three scheduled for four at this lightweight fight. Rushy Warren in the silver and purple trunks. Taking on John Molina in the white trunks. It's been all Warren so far as we expected. 10-8 round, he had him down in the first round. But Molina's in there and still game. Lead, lead left. <laughs> that found the mark. Yeah, Rashi is just sharp on the outside. You know, they, they told uh, Molina in the corner to, uh, even when you're on the outside, use your jack, keep him occupied. Two things that are difficult to do with that on Warren. If you're Molina, one thing is you're at a speed disadvantage. So Rashi's jab will out jab you. Oh, good down body shot there. Yeah, and they went downstairs again. You figure after it was a short fight, but you figure it's really taking a toll on Molina, the veteran. As I said, he's been in many, many fights. This is his 50, I think 59th or 60th professional fight. So 
he's got he's got a lot, he's a veteran and i think that he knows his way around the ring for that reason and he's able to you know get through these rounds because of that but again the second problem with jabbing with rashi warren if you're molina is that he's at a speed disadvantage so because of that rashi will be able to counter him so he's got to be careful even trying to cut distance he's, he's, it, it's a tough it's a tough uh, it's a tough break here for for uh, molina trying to take on rashi warren you think rashi might get a little bit frustrated those body shots haven't cut him down so far well, that, well I, don't, I don't know that rashi gets frustrated he's a professional and again he's had so much experience even as an amateur you know if, if guys don't go anywhere you just keep beating them you know if they go they go if not you get a get in a night's work and that's what rashi's doing good point good point crowd getting a little restless however but good work here i mean there's four clean shots three right jabs and a body shot with the left hand for more Molina's got a pretty good chin, though, man. Rashi's cracked him tonight. And again, lands a decent right hand there. I mean, nothing special, but at least it shows you he's live. And it shows Rashi that he's live, you know, that he's basically, uh, he's here to fight still. You know, once you get a guy stopped throwing punches completely, you know, you know he's looking for a way out. Molina, definitely frustrated, smiling out of frustration more so than anything else. But at the end of the day, it's Warren's speed that's frustrating him. Tonight's CompuBox stats are brought to you by ThrowdownFantasy.com. Draft fighters, track stats, and win. Closing out the third round as Warren has beaten Molina across the ropes and sideways. Letting the hands go right here. Looks like Rashid's had a, enough for the night if he can get him out of there. 18 seconds left in round number three. Molina's taking a lot of punishment in this. You have to wait to see what the referee wants to do with it. Inside 10 seconds now. We go to the fourth and final round here. Rushy Warren, the three-time Olympian, way ahead on the cards. But to his credit, the veteran John Molina is still there. Rashi's hitting with just about everything he has. Body shots, hooks, and of course his famous jab. But Molina's proven to be a tough customer after sitting down in the first round for a 10-8 round for Rashi Warren. And that's the thing about Rashi. He doesn't have great one-punch power or anything like that, but he's got a lot of ring intelligence, uh, ring generalship, uh, a lot of hand speed, so he can be very creative. I think in the long run, with longer rounds in his fights, he'll be able to probably get guys out of there more. You know, trying to rush a knockout for a guy who doesn't have big one-punch power. You see the an exchange here. You know, it, it's harder for Rashi to get these knockouts because he runs out of time. So like, even if he may be breaking guys down over time, you know, he, he's not going to, the time's going to run out on him to get the KO. I think when he starts fighting eight and ten round fights, you may see that speed finally wear those opponents down and, and get those stoppages. Been landing hard shots upstairs with both hands. Inside two minutes left in this fight, our first fight of the evening. You see the speed of that jab. Sets it out there, then follows up with the left hook over the top. He's been landing pretty much at will. If it was, a, if it was an amateur scoring, Paulie, he'd be so far ahead, they'd probably call it off at this point. Yeah, yeah, I mean, good snap on his shots. He sets his distance well, you know, he doesn't smother his work. Uh, you know, very disciplined in there. But, you know, he's also got a, a hardened veteran in front of him. I mean, Molina may not be the best fighter in the world, but this is a guy who's been in so many professional fights, he knows how to get through the rounds. And he's, and he's been hit before plenty of times, obviously, through all those fights. So he, he's taking a punch is nothing for him um, tonight. But uh, at the end of the day, I guess, again, Rashi Wong will get in a night's work and uh, move on to the next one. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. Coming up on one minute left in our first fight of the evening, lightweight division. <laughs> a good exchange right here. Rashi's throwing and backing up at the same time. Rashi's gonna hurt him. This is a that's his chance to hurt him right there. In between shots, when Molina's committing fully and you catch him with something he doesn't see. In the 15 professional fights, only three KOs to Rashi's credit. That was interesting. That showed his balance and the way he could work, even moving backwards all the way to the ropes, he was still landing effectively. But you can't put a lot of power when you're in reverse behind it, but he was still landing. Of course, and it also shows, you know, the, as you said, the good balance. Also, he's able to keep that, maintain that dis that punch distance. You know, he's going back, the guy's going forward, but he's making sure he, he keeps that distance by going backwards so that he's able to let go of those snapping shots. Closing out the fight here, final seconds winding down between Warren and Molina. 
And so it was pretty much pretty much a shutout in this fight. But uh, we'll, we'll have to see how Warren responds to this because when I talked to him earlier today, he was thinking he could take this guy out. He threw a lot of punches, landed a lot of punches, very sharp, Polly. But uh, W is a W, and he won it handily. Yeah. So we'll be getting the judges' results. You're watching Golden Boy Boxing on Fox Sports 1. We are back. We are back at the BBT Center here in Sunrise, Florida, awaiting the uh, official scoring. And we'll be going to Joe Martinez for that. It went the distance. Okay, let's take a look at the final punch stats from tonight. John Molina was not hardly as active as you can see. Rashi Warren, very effective, landing 38% of the punches, 200 thrown, and uh, landed 77 to only 25% for John Molina in this fight. Tonight's copy about stats are brought to you by throwdownfantasy.com. Draft fighters, track stats, and win. All right, let's send it up to our ring announcer, Joe Martinez. After four rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards, and we have a unanimous decision. All three judges score this bout 40 35 for your winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated, Rashi Baby Pig. Okay, the victory goes to Rashi Warren. Unanimous decision as we expected. And uh, we're gonna get his thoughts on where he thinks he is now in his professional career. Fighting four-rounder here tonight in the lightweight division. Seemed to be a lot of good work for him on this evening. Uh, he might have wanted to get the knockout, but Rashi's not known as a knockout artist. He's known as an artist, period, when it comes to the art of boxing. Let's send it up to Pauly now and get reaction. All right, we're here with the winner, Rashi Warren. Rashi, durable guy, man. You hit that guy with a lot of stuff. Uh, give me your thoughts. Um, I felt pretty good, you know, coming out. But then, you know, I had got a little cold, you know, like two days ago. So um, and when I was fighting, you know, using my jab, and I wasn't really following up with a lot of shots because I felt like I was kind of losing some of my strength. So I was just kind of breathing through the fight. And, and I could have took him out, you know, and my coach was telling me, you know, work the body. But uh, I won't really listen at, at some point because I was trying to, you know, keep myself going all the way up to the fourth round. And, you know, I felt good, but I ain't look as good. Well, you know, you, in my opinion, I felt like I ain't look as good. Well, you won all four rounds, we thought so com convincingly uh, from ringside. Uh, we saw the concerted, the, the effort to get to the body. Was it a little harder to get to the body being he was so short? We saw that he had a little bit of a soft gut. Yeah, um, when I'm fighting shorter guys to the, in a fight, some people think it's easy to go, you know, go that low to hit a person to the body. And he was ducking down. And I was trying to get to the body some at some point, but every time I went down, I felt like he was headbutting me. I was trying to use his head when I was coming in, so I was using the jab more so I could open him up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a lot harder to get to guys when they're shorter and the lefty-righty matchup also bending over a lot of times uh, the headbutt's getting away. You see, see them combinations here. Take us through these combinations. Uh, I was, um, you know, trying to land some of my power shots and, you know, work some of the combinations. And he was a tough guy. He stayed up. But when I was working to the body, you know, I felt like I was hurting him and my coach wanted me to keep going to the body. But, you know, I, I, I kind of had the game plan going in there, but then I kind of lost it um, towards, the, you know, going to his last rounds. He seemed like a durable guy. It's a veteran. You know, we saw uh, a lot of times you would punch him between him. You think that was the best way to try to get him out of there because because a lot of times they look like when you were initiating the offense, he was just covering up, but hitting between him, you know, might have been the best way. Yeah, that's why um, I felt like in the fourth round, you know, throw some combos so he can, you know, exchange with me and I could catch him in between. But like I said, you know, I started back working on the jab and, you know, I felt like I didn't have uh, enough energy in there, you know, because I was sick, but I still I felt like I looked it good and then move on to the next opponent, you know. Hopefully I'll do better than what I did today. All right, well, good job, Rashi. Good win. Alan, back to you. Rushy Warren, uh, not happy with himself, fought through some adversity in this one, the most important thing. This is the seventh fight of this year, so they've been working him hard. He knows, and that is the, the mindset of a champion. He knows he's not quite where he wants to be, and that's why they're moving him along slowly until he figures out exactly 
the type of fighter he wants to be and works on the things he needs to move on to the upper echelons of the sport. No one has a greater amateur record, of course, than Rashi Warren and a great representative of the United States as an Olympian three times, but now he's in a different, different world in the professional ranks. 